So, I've been away for five days. I came home, dropped all my gear, chucked everything in the wash. Ticket wash, did a bit of housework, grabbed my gear and came out to a field near Methley. Got to thank Rich for recommending this field. It's one of the best fields I've seen for bluebells. The reason I went home and got out straight away is I thought, I'm going to get home, I'm going to get out and do the first, first vlog on bluebell photography, because I've not seen any yet. Bada boom. 95% of my attention when I'm doing landscape photography is probably eye level, with a couple of percent on the floor making sure I don't fall into a hole or looking for foreground interest. But with bluebells, 95% of my time is towards my feet or towards my the area immediately in front of me so I don't damage or uh, destroy any of the bluebells. So my thighs have had a good workout. And as I was walking through, I saw some white bells. But the reason they work, or I'm hoping they work, is because if I can get a composition quite far away, and I'm going to use my long lens, I'm going to try to get to 140. So I get some nice separation. The light's very flat. Essentially, this is a scouting trip for the sunrise or sunset when I can get some nice light. The light's not bad, but it's very flat, but it's diffused. So I'm looking to get, let's have a look. There's a subject, there's a subject, there's a subject. So I'm looking to get over there somewhere, around there, so I can shoot right across, focusing on the tulips to see what it looks like. If it works, bang on, location for sunrise or sunset when there's some nice warm light. What I'm after is a very shallow depth of field, isolating one or two or a little clump of bluebells. So I photographed recently, if, if I can find a link I'll, po I'll, I'll post it, where they photographed through some trees and they've done some intentional camera movement and obviously blended a couple of photographs because the top were quite dreamy. There was a very shallow depth of field in the foreground and it was like a line of bluebells and it really worked well because it gave a really dreamy feel to it. Nothing quiet. You can definitely wild camp here. Yeah, I can hear the distant vehicles but overriding them are the birds. Anyway, let's get some photographs taken. See ya. Wow, this is not as easy as you'd, as you'd think it would be. You almost have to act or behave counterintuitively to what you'd normally uh, behave like when you're taking landscape photographs. You have to develop a tunnel vision because I'm literally out here on the ground. It's probably 80%, 78% bluebells. So if you don't kind of develop your tunnel vision so you can focus on and pick out specific objects in your environment, you will get overwhelmed with the the potential and possible compositions, the sheer colour, the sheer blanket of colour in the surroundings. Now the white bells, as I've been told they were called, didn't quite work. I couldn't quite frame them correctly. I couldn't get a separation from the surrounding bluebells. So as I was walking back to my um, bag and carrying on, I noticed in the distance a white blob Again, hence the tunnel vision. I wasn't, I was like going through the environment grid by grid, not Terminator style. But I was looking for contrast. Because in a sea of bluebells, contrast really does stand out. And that white feather that was perched on top of a few bluebells really stood out. So I thought, I'll have a go. 
I took the photograph, I took several photographs, I had to get really low down. F2.8, F3.2, F4, F5.6, tried various, um, various aperture settings. So I'm walking across and I tell you, it's tiring on the thighs, lifting your legs up. I think somebody's gonna see me, I'm gonna look, I'm gonna look like a right lunatic. I don't know how long bluebirds last, but it's definitely a sunset subject matter. If you arrive in the dark, it'll be very difficult for you to find your composition, to find, even if you, even if you, you pre-plan, you know where you're going, to try to make your way through the bluebells will be quite difficult. So it's definitely a sunset composition. Ideally, get here about five o'clock, bring your lunch, find an open space, sit down, have your lunch, get your camera set up on your tripod with your shutter release, turn your camera off and then just wait for the opportune time for the light to develop and for your sunset to, to arrive and hopefully cast some lovely warm light on your bluebells. So I think I'll do that on possibly Saturday. It is absolutely stunning. As I said, I've never seen such a swathe of bluebells. I like that. The light's just arrived and you've got dappled light in the bluebells. Dappled light can work really well or it can ruin your image. It can work really well because if you can get dappled light on your subjects, specifically on the outer areas, uh, not in the light, that can really make it pop. You can also use a flash, off camera flash, soft box, pointing straight towards your subject to make it, to make it really pop out from the, from the, from the surroundings. Of course, you can do it in, in, in post processing, in Lightroom with the, the radio filter. Wow. I can't help but get overwhelmed. I cannot help but get overwhelmed. Right, I'll wrap it up from there. I shall see what's in that building. If I can get some compositions there, I may be back, but I probably won't. My focus point. So, poor the bugs are all over the place. So quick, hour and a half scouting trip. One thing I've learned, there's potential. There's a lot of potential here. Yeah, done for the day, lovely dappled light. See ya. So I watched a video years ago by Joe Cornish and he was talking about how as photographers we strive to capture a beautiful photograph. I mean, he went to Gordale Scar, you'll know if you've been there. He went to the waterfall at the bottom, but he saw a composition which would involve him having to climb up the lower waterfall. Now, as photographers, we strive all the time to capture the photograph, we'll get wet feet, we'll get cold, we'll get windswept, we'll climb that false horizon after false horizon after false horizon, we'll go around that corner, around that corner, around that corner. Strive to get the image that you're after, something you'll be proud of. Now, that's resulted in bugger all for me today. <laughs> I haven't found anything, but it's been a lovely walk. I can't believe how hard it is to photograph, but uh, to photograph bluebells. The first part of the video, I cover this again, so it's probably a bit of repetition. The bluebells here at Temple User are better than the ones at the other woods. Sorry, Rich, but there are more of them. So I'm just keep an eye, on, keep an eye on the light. But it's, I just can't get anything. It's not. It's a bit frustrating. I'm going to persevere and keep on. I've got another, another hour and a half before sunset, so I've got plenty of time. It's seven o'clock. I don't know what I want. That's 
one of the problems. But having a carpet of bluebells doesn't really capture my interest. I tried the free lens in, it didn't work. All I got was out of focus buttercups with this bloody great awful purple lens flare. So I don't know what went wrong there. Anyway, let's get into the woods. Let's capture at least one good photograph. And let's go. Found a lovely little lone bluebell. So I've got as low as I can in the mud. Down the day. I've got the long lens on. I'm at 40 mm I've got the off-camera flash set up, polarizer on, and it's looking half decent on the back of the uh, screen. But you never know until you get home. I've managed to get the hole, the blue bill in, and just the top. So I've taken various shutter speeds, various apertures, various compositions, I mean, yeah, lovely. I've got the polarizer on just to remove a bit of the sheen. And I've done a bit of gardening just to clear the base of the lone buttercup. It's almost like it was planted for me. Anyway, I'm gonna get back into the midden, see what I can get, some nice light, some nice light. But yeah, so I've managed to find this path. The The clouds cleared for a short while and this gorgeous warm light appeared. Then it was snuffed out by some clouds, which was disappointing. I don't think it would have penetrated the canopy anyway. So I was like, Richard Attenborough. My dad once said, there's no such thing as a wasted journey. And there isn't. And what I've got here, I've just got this meandering footpath, the camera was slightly lower, just meandering its way through the forest. Whether it works, I don't know. It just captured my eye. I've taken it in vertical orientation. Um, I was just slightly forward, capturing from around, around there, right through to the end. I can usually find something, but I'm not sure. I'm not actually sure what I'm after. It's very, very peculiar. So now we've got five past eight. How long have I walked? 3.08 miles. Yeah. Not easy, not easy. I mean, there are literally gajillions of buttercu buttercups. Oh, some lights penetrating through. That is what I'm talking about. Something like that. As you can see, some lovely warm light. Quick burst through the clouds, so I, I run around like a bloody lunatic. I took a couple of photographs. You can see down that path. I turned around, I saw this tree, and this tree was in in light, some lovely warm light on the tree. So what I decided to do, I decided to rush over, plonk my camera down. I've taken some in in very vertical orientation. I've got the tree in. I've probably got from just around, just below, just in front of that white belt. I've captured a sharp image, one second, so it will be that sharp. Then I've panned the camera up doing some intentional camera movement and I'm hoping to blend the two together. God loves a trier. Light's gone. Yep, so that's, there we go, can you see it? Probably not. So that's what I've been looking at. As I say, I've been getting the tree and the bluebells, white bell, sharp. Then I've taken the same exposure for a second, just panning up. And I'm going to blend the two together. A blatant copy of one I've already seen, but who cares? 
probably going to sign up for now because the sun has set so no more colour in the trees head off home glorious absolutely glorious anyway see ya Thank you.